Let's talk about epigenetics. Epigenetic. <laughs> it is. It's ethical and eth ethic genetics. Ethic epigenetics. Correct. So what is the education and ethics? And that includes, uh, that includes realistic intention, realistic speech, and realistic action, and realistic livelihood. There are four branches of the Eightfold Path have to do with the ethical education. And then the second one is a, is a mental higher education in mind, which has to do with samadhi and mindfulness, you know, developing ability to concentrate and to really learn how your mind works, and also developing your mindfulness. Have I, how many of you have ever practiced mindfulness, mindfulness meditation? Oh, lots of you. Oh, that's good. So then you had that experience of counting to ten. That was so frustrating because your mind ran away with you at two <laughs> and three, and then you had to bring it back, right? And then you got a little better and you could get to it. Then, of course, you cheat. <laughs> you go one, two, and then you think about something, and then you go, oh no, I must be at five now, and six, seven, and on, and cheat them back at night. And you know that, you know that people do that? <laughs> And uh, I don't know that. And then, and then anyway, when you do that, that's really powerful because what that does is it enables you to see that you don't have to identify with everything you think. There's a wonderful one nun. I never heard anybody say that. I heard a teacher say that until recently, about two years ago. One wonderful nun who lives in Washington State. Uh, she's a Jewish girl from Los Angeles, but she's been a nun for 30 years. And she said, you know what I always say? Don't believe everything you think. <laughs> That's terrific. And you only can learn to do that by practicing mindfulness because then you realize there are all these voices in your mind. It's coming from your parents, coming from your conditioning, your education, from somebody you model yourself on. Sort of a mixture of things that you think is your voice. And when you hear that, and that voice in there says, like, okay, Bob, that's unacceptable. You have to get mad now. You know, that person sucks or something. You know, then, then you have to have that emotion because your voice is telling you you have to have that. But if you use mindfulness, you realize it's just a reaction and that you can tune to a different... I always like to say it's like you're a radio that thinks you're only... Or you're a television set that thinks you're only Fox News. <laughs> you have no clicker. And, you, and mindfulness practice gets you to develop a clicker. And you can mute the commercials and you can switch to like another channel. 